Hey friends, welcome back now to our morning devotional time. We're in the book of 1 Samuel. Today we're just going to have one verse. We're moving over to chapter 25 now. We finished the first 24 chapters. And one verse, one verse. Let's read it. 1 Samuel 25, verse 1. Then Samuel died, and the Israelites gathered together and lamented for him and buried him at his home in Ramah. And David arose and went down to the wilderness of Paran. So a little bit of an interlude here. Uh, Saul and David have had a lot of friction, but there's a, a momentary peace here. But when Samuel dies, even though we don't have a lot of other things happening here, it's kind of important. Look, the first, the book of 1 Samuel is, uh, a lot of this book is focused exactly on the ministry of the judge, Samuel. Samuel was Israel's leader uh, through many hard years. God had the system of judges where God would pick from among the most, many times among the most humble people, he would pick somebody, bring them up out of nothing, and that person became a deliverer or a judge over Israel. And Samuel was the last of the judges, and now he dies. So now there's a uh, this kind of is going to finish this transition really into the monarchy where we start with Saul and then we're going to come to David and so on, the sons of different sons of David. And the last of the judges now has died, and we're moving to this monarchy, which God kind of warned them, 1 Samuel chapter 8. You can look at it again. We've got a couple of those on that one. God warned them that this isn't going to be so good like you think. You know, you wanted a king like all the nations to be your deliverer. And he said, really, you've not chosen, you know, you're not against Samuel as much as you're against me, God said. You're rebelling against me. Nevertheless, he said, they're asking for a king. He said to Samuel, go ahead, give them a king. We'll give them a human king. And it's not going to be as good as it could have been, but that's what they'll have. They'll have a human king. But I'm still going to sort of be above that. So that's what we have here. This is the end of this period. This is the last of the judges. So that's kind of what happens here. That's why this is kind of a waymark verse. And from here on, it's monarchy uh, on through. So uh, just a quick pause here. And David and Saul not really trusting each other, but not at, at immediately in war. But the death of Samuel was surely the most uh, one of the most striking events to happen for that whole nation. So they gathered, they lamented for him, and they gave him a burial in his long-term home, Rama. Uh, lessons for us: sometimes we just come to a pivotal, a pivotal spot there, a shift in history, a shift in how God is doing things, and this is kind of the conclusion for Samuel. So we watch for those different shifts. And a lot of times there's a shift from something better to something worse. That's really kind of, even though the time of Judges was a wild time, in some ways it was a lot better than the time of the monarchies. So anyway, here we have it. And no more Samuel. We want to watch what God is doing in our world and make sure we are keeping up with the movement of the kingdom. And sometimes the kingdom is going to move in a direction that even God would prefer it was a little bit different. But he won't always intervene, and he'll let it go in a direction, and that's what he does here. He allowed them to move from the time of the judges to the time of the kings, the monarchies. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for Samuel, who was so faithful, and yet uh, there was so much uh, unfaithfulness in his time. But he was a rock in his time, and he helped Israel come through these 24 chapters until here we are uh, at this spot as we are going through the book. Lord, we want to be uh, knowing who your leaders are at different times, so please give us good leadership. Give us faithful leadership. Samuel was always faithful. We look for that. That can be a pattern for us, as you might pick some of us in some respects to lead among your people. Help us to be humble, careful, and always under your ultimate leadership. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. God is still on his throne. He's still providing leaders for his people. Uh, please be sure, wherever you are in your local setting, your local congregation, pray for your pastors, pray for your elders, pray for the leaders of God's church, because if there was ever a time when they need your prayers, now is certainly such a time. God be with you.